Hi, my name is Jeff Weiss. I'm a partner in the International Trade Group at Venable in Washington, D.C. Welcome to this webinar on regulatory coherence in Peru. This webinar is the result of an initiative undertaken by the Advanced Medical Technology Association, ADVAMED, as part of the U.S. Agency for International Development's Standards Alliance Project, which is overseen by the American National Standards Institute. The goal of the initiative is to promote regulatory coherence, including central coordination and good regulatory practices, and to provide capacity building and assistance to the governments of targeted developing countries in Latin America, Colombia, Mexico, Peru, and the CAFTA DR countries. This initiative has two components, tier one and tier two. Tier one is the regulatory coherence initiative which is horizontal, it covers all sectors. Tier two, the goal is to promote regulatory coherence in the medical device sector. So this webinar is part of tier one. Now in tier one, we've developed a formal, internationally benchmarked manual and implementation guide for policymakers to legally codify and implement foundational regulatory coherence policies in the project countries. Next, we conducted an assessment of the existing regulatory coherence policies in four of those countries, Costa Rica, Colombia, Peru, and Mexico. And we did that assessment against the manual and implementation guide principles. Based on that assessment, we've developed a gap analysis report for each country in English and Spanish, as well as a flow chart demonstrating the life cycle of a typical regulation in each country. This webinar discusses our findings with respect to Peru. But before we go into a discussion of Peru's regulatory system, I want to provide a brief overview of regulatory coherence. Regulatory coherence refers to the degree of central coordination and review under which the whole of government works to ensure that regulations and regulatory policy reflect good regulatory practices or GRPs. Regulatory coherence has two components, central coordination and GRPs, and let's take those one at a time. So in order to ensure that all good regulatory practices are well understood and followed across agencies to enhance regulatory outcomes, it's critical that a government have a central coordination and oversight body or mechanism responsible for managing the regulatory process and ensuring adherence to a published set of good regulatory practices that are endorsed at the political level, applied government-wide, and revised over time as best practices evolve. Such a body or mechanism can also ensure that there is political level buy-in and accountability on a whole of government strategy for regulatory reform that sets out clear objectives, establishes an effective implementation mechanism to coordinate and manage the strategy, and emphasizes the importance of a marketplace that is open and pro-competitive, facilitates investment, and rewards innovation. And this will enhance legitimacy and predictability and avoid the creation of trade barriers. Turning towards good regulatory practices, or GRPs, those ensure that rules and regulations are high quality and evidence-based and crafted in an open, transparent, and participatory manner. GRPs include things like regulatory forecasting, regulatory impact assessment, requesting public comments and taking them into account, looking at the international impacts of regulation, the competition impacts of regulation, and ex post review. So this is a very high level overview of central coordination and GRP for a fuller discussion, please watch the webinar on major elements of regulatory coherence, uh, in which we go into greater detail on all, of, on all of these points. And that's also posted to the Standards Alliance website. So now let's go into each of these elements and see how Peru is implementing them. So we'll start with central coordination in Peru. So there is no single central coordinating body in Peru. 
coordinating functions are split among three entities, PCM, CCR, and CCV. First, we have PCM, the Presidency of the Council of Ministers. That is the ministry in charge of coordinating and evaluating the national and sectoral policies of the executive branch, which also coordinates relations with the rest of the branches of the state, as well as with agencies, regional governments, local governments, and civil society. The coordination secretariat within PCM, which we'll refer to as SCPCM, plays a lead role in the regulatory review process. The second entity is the Multisectorial Regulatory Quality Commission, or CCR. So CCR was established very recently in July 2017 and is chaired by PCM. CCR is comprised of the General Secretary of PCM, the Vice Minister of Economy, and the Justice Vice Minister. CCR works as a coordinating and reviewing agency for regulatory quality policy and is overseeing the new ex post review process, which we'll discuss later on in this webinar. In addition, CCR has developed various guides and manuals for disseminating and adopting good regulatory practices. For example, a guide on legislative technique, a guide on transparency, a guide on regulatory quality and publication of regulatory drafts, the manual for regulatory quality analysis, and they also worked on the manual for best practices of the Andean community. There are currently eight staffers working in CCR, not including outside consultants. This includes five lawyers, one economist, and one engineer. The third entity involved in Central Coordination Peru is the Vice Ministerial Coordinating Council, or CCV. CCV is comprised of 35 participating vice ministers. CCV reviews and discusses multi-sectoral regulatory proposals. Those are proposals that cut across three or more agencies. Each vice minister can raise substantive or procedural issues with respect to a measure that CCV is reviewing. And a draft regulation will not be adopted until all issues have been resolved and the vice ministers reach a consensus. And the relationship between those three will become a little clearer when we go through the life cycle of a typical regulation in Peru a little bit later on. So let's go into some of the GRPs and see how Peru is implementing them under its system. So let's start with regulatory forecasting. So a regulatory forecast is a central electronic publication, ideally updated no less than every six months, of all planned and ongoing regulatory activity. So in Peru, there is no structured or systematic regulatory planning system, whether for technical regulations or other types of regulations. And since we're gonna be using the term technical regulations a lot, I'd like to define that term. So technical regulations is actually a, a WTO term, which generally refers to product regulations. So regulations that set out product characteristics, related processes and production methods, related labeling and packaging requirements, and any applicable administrative provisions as well. That's an important term to remember. So there's no structured or, or systematic regulatory planning system right now. PCM is considering requesting that non-independent agencies provide a list of upcoming regulatory proposals and publishing a comprehensive list. Now with respect to standards, which are voluntary, agencies are required to prepare and submit a yearly strategic standardization plan. This process is overseen by INACAL, the National Institute for Quality, which is Peru's highest authority on technical standards and is responsible for standardization, accreditation, and metrology. INACAL also forms standardization technical committees, which are comprised of producers, consumers, academics, technicians, and government officials to develop technical standards. And in Peru, technical standards should be reviewed every five years, and INACAL oversees that process as well. Now let's turn to national regulatory register. 
So and that is a central electronic publication issued with a regular frequency that solicits stakeholder input on draft regulations and provides links to the full text of such matters as well as the dockets. So that's ideally what we're looking for. Uh, so with respect to how Peru implements that GRP, agencies in Peru are required to publish regulatory proposals in El Peruano, which is Peru's daily official government gazette. With respect to proposed technical regulations, there is also a portal with a notification section on the website of the Ministry for Foreign Trade and Tourism, or MINSATOR, that displays proposed technical regulations that have been notified to the WTO, both from Peru and from all WTO member countries. Now let's talk about the public comment process in Peru. So as previously noted, an agency is required to publish regulatory proposals in the official gazette, El Peruano. They need to do that at least 30 days before the measure enters into force. Each agency has discretion to determine the length of a public comment period on a proposed regulation. An agency also must allow interested parties to submit comments on the measures being proposed. Now for general administrative acts, so regulations that are not technical regulations, there is no requirement for most agencies to respond to stakeholder input and modify their proposals. There are a few agencies within PCM that actually do need to respond to stakeholder input, but generally there's no requirement. However, with respect to technical regulations, Peru has notification obligations to the World Trade Organization. Peru also has notification obligations to its Andean community partners, as well as bilateral free trade agreement partners. And for purposes of its Andean community obligations, Peru notifies proposed technical regulations through a system called CERT, Notification Information and Technical Regulation System. For such measures, an agency generally must allow submission of public comment for 90 days. They must respond to the comments in writing and take the comments into account. With respect to comments received in response to an international notification, Peru's regulators are obliged to give a detailed reply to the comments and prepare and publish a reply document. And there's a space reserved in the portal for technical regulations of Peru in which agencies post their responses to comments. So next, let's turn to regulatory analysis in Peru. So in Peru, executive agencies are required to publish what is known as the description of motivation for a regulatory measure. This is the document that explains the need for the regulatory measure and its most important elements, provides a summary of the pertinent background information, and that includes any data relied upon. A legal analysis that has to discuss the constitutionality and legality of the proposed regulatory measure, and that's in addition to its consistency with all other laws in the national legal system and Peru's international obligations. And this document is normally prepared by the agency in charge of the regulatory measure once the regulatory proposal has been drafted. Now agencies are also required to prepare a cost-benefit analysis of a proposed regulatory measure. But it's our understanding that at present, in most cases, such an analysis is not actually undertaken. With respect to technical regulations, there is a manual of best regulatory practices that lays out how to conduct an RIA and recommends that regulatory entities develop an RIA, but it's not required. Other types of analysis. Let's talk about science and competition and assessment of international impacts. So Peru does not have a general policy on the use of science and regulation. And there's no requirement for agencies to use a risk-based approach for developing and adopting general administrative acts. However, regulatory measures that may affect plant or animal health must be based on technical and scientific analysis. With respect to competition, 
Peru does not require regulatory entities to prepare a pro-competitive analysis when developing a regulatory measure, although it is possible that the Ministry of Economy will examine competition issues when it reviews the measure. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Regarding international impacts, there is also no requirement to conduct an analysis of international impacts when there is a proposed regulatory measure. Now, the way this factor is treated largely depends on the regulator's experience. If a proposed measure may have international trade implications, Mincetor is likely to weigh in during the regulatory process, even though there is no requirement to conduct a formal analysis. Turning to the use of standards and regulation, the main issue there is the requirement under Article 2.4 of the TBT agreement to use relevant international standards as a basis for such regulations. Uh, in that case, the key question is, what is an international standard? And in Peru, regulators looked to standards developed by Geneva-based bodies first, followed by regional standards, such as Andean community standards, and then national standards, and then finally, association standards. Now let's turn to entry into force, as well as judicial review of final regulations. So, in general, in order to permit stakeholders to become aware of new regulations or changes to existing ones, regulators should allow a reasonable period of time, usually not less than six months, between publication of the final rule and its entry into force. That's the GRP. Now, in Peru, with respect to general administrative acts, the requirement is to publish a regulatory measure at least 30 days before its effective date. With respect to technical regulations, however, the term between publication of a proposed technical regulation and its entry into force should be at least six months, unless doing so would hinder attainment of the legitimate objectives pursued. Turning to judicial review, we are unaware of any legal procedure in Peru through which an interested party can challenge a regulatory measure. However, Indicopi, which is Peru's National Consumer Protection Authority, maintains a bureaucratic barrier elimination process that was created by law and that private parties can use to challenge specific measures. And this process allows challenges to measures that are illegal and or unreasonable, measures that restrict or hinder market access, or violate the standards or principles for administrative simplification. Now let's turn to ex post assessment of the regulatory stock. And here in Peru, there is a new system called the Analysis of Regulatory Quality System, or ACR. And CCR developed this system and is implementing it. This is a systematic process for reviewing regulations from the perspective of reducing administrative burdens. It requires review of all existing and draft regulations that establish administrative procedures every three years. Measures are reviewed to ensure they are legal, necessary, proportionate, and effectively contribute to achieving the goal of the procedure and are not unnecessarily complex. Non-independent regulatory entities need to evaluate all administrative burdens in the regulatory stock against these principles in accordance with the provisions of the manual for applying the analysis of regulatory quality developed by CCR. So CCR developed a manual to guide this process. And the, the determination that the entities need to make is whether the administrative burdens can be eliminated, and if not, whether the compliance costs associated with those burdens can be reduced. And the first report under this new system is due at the end of this year. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how this is implemented and if regulations are put forward for potential elimination or modification, how that process will work. So we'll be watching that very closely. So let's put it all together and look at the life cycle of a typical regulation in Peru. So there are two sources of authority to regulate. First, a law can require an agency to regulate, 
a regulator can also regulate under its general authority. So, and that's the same in all the countries we looked at. The process for issuing new regulatory measures in Peru generally follows two different paths. If a draft regulation would not add or modify an administrative burden, and if it would not require the approval of three or more regulatory entities, there's no review of the draft regulation. So in general, in that case, the agency still develops the draft regulation with the description of motivation, its own lawyers conduct a legal review, the agency publishes the proposal for public comment, the agency had approves and signs the final regulation, and a final regulation is published in the official gazette in El Peruano. So that's the first case. We're really gonna focus more on, on the second case in situations where a draft regulation would add or modify an administrative burden, or a draft regulation requires the approval of three or more regulatory entities, or both. So if either of those or both of those are the case, the draft regulation proceeds through the following review process. So step one, the regulator develops the proposed regulation. They develop the description of motivation, as we've discussed earlier, and the regulator's legal department reviews it. Step two, the regulator submits the draft regulation to SCPCM to start the review process. So first, SCPCM forwards the proposal within PCM to the Secretary of Public Management Department to review and determine whether the draft regulation adds or modifies an administrative burden. If the draft regulation does not add or modify an administrative burden, it progresses to the next step in the process. If the draft regulation does add or modify an administrative burden, it is submitted to CCR, remember that's the Multi-Sectorial Regulatory Quality Commission, and it undergoes a regulatory quality analysis and CCR's opinion is binding on the regulator. If the regulator makes the necessary adjustments that are recommended by CCR's opinion, the draft regulation moves on to step three. If the regulator fails to incorporate CCR's opinion, including any proposed modifications, into the revised regulation, the draft regulation cannot move to the next step. Step three. SCPCM submits the draft regulation to three entities, the Ministry of Economy and Finance, the Ministry of Justice, and PCM, and they're all reviewing for different things. So the Ministry of Economy and Finance does an analysis of the draft regulation's budgetary and economic impacts. The Ministry of Justice does an analysis of the draft regulation's constitutionality and legality. PCM does an assessment of whether the draft regulation is consistent with the guidelines for administrative simplification. And the regulator needs to address the comments by all three entities before moving to the next step in the process. Step four, the draft regulation is sent to PCM to be discussed by the Vice Ministerial Coordinating Council. So CCV is in charge of reviewing and discussing multi-sectoral regulatory proposals. At this stage, any of the 35 participating vice ministers may raise substantive or procedural issues. The draft regulation will not be adopted until all issues have been resolved and the vice ministers reach a consensus. Now there is also a floating step at any time during this process, before the measure enters into force, the regulator has to make the proposed regulation publicly available for comment in El Peruano, on its website, or, or through any other method for a period of at least 30 days. And there's no set time for when during the process this has to occur, which is why we call it the floating step. Now in the case of proposed technical regulations, the regulator publishes them in El Paruano for 60 days, and Peru's 
inquiry point for technical barriers to trade in Mincetor also notifies it to the WTO, the Andean community, and FTA partners for a 90-day comment period. If comments are received, Mincetor sends them to the regulators that the comments can be taken into account. And Mincetor can always weigh in during the process with any international trade concerns. If no comments are received, the Ministry of Economy and Finance reviews the measure, and if it approves, the regulator can publish the final regulation in El Peruano. Now for technical regulations, the goal of the Peruvian authorities is to publish each proposed technical regulation domestically in El Peruano and notify the proposed technical reg regulation to the WTO, Andean community, and free trade agreement partners at the same time. So the goal is that the two comment periods would overlap. In practice, this is not always uh, proven to be possible. And generally speaking, the international notifications are made after the domestic comment process has taken place. The fifth step in the process is that the final regulation is reviewed by the Office of the President's Legal Department to determine its constitutionality and legality. If it passes that test, the President signs it, and the final regulation is published in El Peruano and enters into force. The last point I want to touch on is international regulatory cooperation and how that's uh, led in Peru. And in in Peru, responsibility for international regulatory cooperation is split between two agencies, PCM and Mincetor. PCM is the lead agency that interfaces with other central coordinating authorities in other countries such as OIRA, COFAMER, um, and they deal with cross-cutting regulatory policy issues. Um, even though central coordination is split up in Peru, unlike those other countries, PCM is the interlocutor for cross-cutting reg policy issues. Mincetor is the lead agency with respect to technical barriers to trade matters, and they're assisted on standards accreditation and metrology issues by INACAL. And the key fora in which uh, Peru participates include the OECD in the accession process, uh, APEC, Andean Community, uh, the Pacific Alliance, and the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. So just a few closing thoughts. There are some exciting new initiatives going on in Peru on the regulatory side. Obviously the development of CCR, which was just stood up in July 2017. Um, we'll be very interested to see the results of the first ex post assessment process, which are due at the end of this year, and potentially the start for non-independent agencies of annual regulatory agendas. We'll be interested to see if the ongoing work with the OECD uh, leads to additional changes in Peruvian regulatory policy, uh, as well as potential cooperation opportunities and opportunities to deepen regulatory coherence through Pacific Alliance and CPTPP. So thanks very much for watching this webinar. And thanks also to AdvaMed and ANSI for making this all possible, and to Aguilar and Luera in Mexico City, which provided invaluable assistance to Venable on this project. In closing, I would like to note that this webinar is posted on the Standards Alliance website, along with other related webinars in this series. So you'll also be able to find there the Manual and Implementation Guide on Good Regulatory Design, which we mentioned earlier, the complete analyses of the four regulatory systems plus the United States, documents that set out the life cycle of a regulation in all five countries, and the slide decks and transcripts from all the webinars. If after reviewing the materials you have additional questions or would like to discuss further, please feel free to contact me. My contact information is on the last slide. So thanks again and have a great day.